Hey guys, Alex here, AG Automotive. And here today we've got the 2022 Sangyong Muso, and this is the ultimate. So let's check it out. Before we get into the video, just want to do a shout out to Brian Hilton Sangyong, who were nice enough to let me have a look at this today. And I'll leave their contact details down below. And if you are after a Sangyong Muso or any of the Sangyong range, go and see them and let them know that Alex from AG Automotive sent you and they will look after you. All right, so the front here, you've got this, the Sangyong badge, you've got a big silver and black trimmed grill. Again, a lot of cars seem to do that. You do have your daytime running lights and headlights along with your driving lights and your parking sensors along the front. And also, there is a little camera there if you can see, as this has 360 degree cameras. So what are your thoughts on the Muso? And this being the ultimate let me know in the comments. Have you got one? Have you got an older one? Um, do you enjoy it? So the wheels on the Muso Ultimate are 18 inch wheels and they've got a piano black finish. They sort of have a bit of a interesting design. I think it suits the Muso along with these plastic surrounds around the wheel arches there. You do get a really long side step along with there's the camera under there if you can see that now Brian Hilton have also fitted some weather shields now also at the back here you've got this roll bar now I really like it I think it sort of makes it really sporty and you've got the little Sangyong badge and riding there and I like it in the black sort of black on black black wheels black trim it sort of yeah, stands out really, really nicely. All right, so in the tray of the Muso, now being the ultimate, you get the longer tray, you actually get 325 mil longer. So in this one, you get 1625 mil in length, 1570 in width, 1140 between the wheel arches and 570 deep, which is really good. Now you do get four tie down points there, two up the front and two at the back and the tailgate does not have a torsion bar so it is actually really really heavy so if i lift that up whoa, it's um it is a little bit heavy so at the back here you've got the sangyong badge you got muso there sangyong there you've also got the four by four and then further down you do have your parking sensors some reflectors and uh interesting rear bumper just to break it up now brian hilton have fitted a tow bar to this and it can actually tow up to three and a half ton which is pretty incredible actually only most of the big wigs seem to do that or the big major players do that so i'm very impressed with sangyong already they haven't even got in it all right let's go and have a look inside all right, just in the Muso. And first impressions is, it's quite nice in here, actually. You do get quite a lot of hard plastics, like the dash is hard plasticky, the doors, even round the gear selector, and the dash is a bit hard plasticky. You do get some nice, sort of soft, leathery material around the air conditioning and where the stop start is. And you get a nice bit of, I guess, carbon fibre look just to sort of break it up a little bit and make it that little bit more homely and nicer. So to the right of the steering wheel, you've got your headlight height control, traction control, hill descent control, lane departure warning, your parking sensors and your camera view. And I'll just show you that now. I am pretty impressed with that, actually. That is really, really clear. You can see out the front or to the right there. 
Now, the steering wheel. So nice leather steering wheel, and you've got some buttons for your audio and your heated steering wheel on the left, and some cruise control settings on the right. And you've got auto headlights and auto wipers there as well. Now, the steering wheel adjustment is really good. You can go out, in, or down, or up. Now on the dash itself, uh, you do have analog speedo and taco along with a digital speedo. So you can actually change the dash layout, so how the speedo and taco lays out. And I'll just go through a couple of them. So we do have your tire pressure monitor, your trip computers there, and your driving range. All right, so the media screen. Now this is, I think it's a little bit small, but it has everything that you need on it. So you have AM, FM, radio. You've also got Bluetooth from a mobile device. You've got media from either a Bluetooth device or a USB. You do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And you can even look at the manual as well in here. And below that, you do have some shortcut buttons for your radio, for the mode, for the phone, your setup, your media, or the user. And you've got this big dial here, which is my favorite the volume knob now further down you do have your single zone air conditioning again really easy to use and then to the right of that you do have your engine start stop button there it's got a nice chrome ring to it so i like that now further down from there you do have heated and cooling seats so further down you do have a 12 volt power supply two usbs and you also have a cigarette lighter now I don't think I've seen them in cars for a very very long time so there you go you do have a little bit of space down here it looks like something to either rest your phone with or something else and the gear selector itself PRND and then you've got your manual mode you also do get a drive mode there with eco power and winter so further back you do have the four-wheel drive selector you got two high four high and four low now you also get this which is a proper handbrake which again you don't see many of them around anymore most of them have got those finger brakes now you do get two cup holders behind there and you also do get this which is an ashtray so i guess if you're going to get a cigarette lighter you may as well get an ashtray with it so that goes in there, two cup holders with the teeth. All right, the armrest. Now, it's not hugely comfy, I'll be honest. If we open that up, you got a fair bit of storage room in there. So we'll have a look at the glove box. You know what? It's pretty big and pretty spacious. So you can get your books in there, plus a few iPads as well. All right, let's go and have a look in the back. All right, just in the back of the Muso. Now, first impressions is it's not that roomy back here. Now, I'm six foot one, 185 centimeters, and I do actually have a little bit of headroom, which is great. Knee room's not very good because this seat's set up for me and my knees are touching the seat. Leg room and foot room isn't all that good either if you are tall or have long legs like I do. Now, you do get two ISO fixed spots there and two behind me. We'll have a look at the armrest. This is really soft. I don't know why they didn't put this material in the front with that one. So you do get two cup holders in the back. And for the rear passengers, you get mat pockets and you also get ventilation or two vents as well. But that's unfortunately it. You don't get any. So for the rear passengers, you do get two air vents and map pockets, but that is all you get. All right, let's go and have a look under the bonnet. All right, so under the bonnet of the Muso. Now, this one being the ultimate, it actually gets a little bit more torque than the standard one. So here we have a 2.2 litre turbo diesel four cylinder, and it produces 133 kilowatts of power and 420 newton meters of torque. The standard one only has 400, and that's mated to a six speed automatic driving the rear wheels. Now, Sangyong claims 
the Muso Ultimate uses 8.6 litres per 100 kilometres, which is really, really good. All right, let's go for a drive. All right, so just going for a drive in the Muso. So, vision out the front is really good, straight ahead and towards the passenger side. Rear vision's pretty good width-wise. You can sort of see down towards the tray, which is good, but you do have your parking sensors and 360 cameras to aid in maneuverability in reverse. Side, vision out the sides, actually, you know what? It's pretty big windows. And the mirrors are big enough and wide enough to get a good field of vision out of them as well. So we're just cruising along in the suburbs and doing about 50 k's. You know, listen to the road noise. It's actually pretty good, pretty quiet in here, which is nice. Now I have chosen this road. Well, it's not hard to pick a road on the Central Coast that is very bumpy, but I've chosen this road, and we're just going to see how the Muso handles bumps at low speed around town. And you know what? It's actually doing pretty well. You can feel them, but they're not as, they don't throw you out of your seat sort of thing. So it actually doesn't do too bad over the bump. So a tick there for Sangyong as well. Now steering, steering feels in the middle. It's not hugely light, but it's not hugely heavy, so. And then we're just going up a slight incline. And the motor just effortlessly goes up the hill. It's, uh, Yeah, I, it's nice actually. I think these are very underrated, to be honest. Not a lot of people sort of, I think, know a lot about them. And the people that do, I, like, I was surprised with things like the towing capacity of three and a half tons. And you know what, the 420 newton meters is fine. Um, it may be a little bit down on power compared to some of the bigger ones, but you know, do you really need it? And depending on what you are using it for, obviously will depend. And for the price and for what you get in this, I think it's actually pretty good, pretty good value. So what's the acceleration from the Muso like? Well, let's find out. Pretty impressive that guys, it does get up and go, the Muso, so yes, very nice. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Alright, thanks guys.